This is mix of TPU and the nylon, a property similar to the TPU or to the nylon. And which settings should I use here? Welcome to my tech farm. My name is Igor and I have another TPU filament for the testing, which is so hard that it is not even measurable on shore A scale. It has a hardness of 72D on shore D scale. The manufacturer is CC3D and earlier I already tested their PBT Pro on this channel. I bought this pool myself from the budget which I got from the Polymaker, who became a channel sponsor in the meantime. According to specifications, this filament has high hardness, high toughness, it is very resistant filament. This is actually a mix of TPU and polyamide or nylon, so that's why I find it very interesting and I decided to buy it. Both materials are very sensitive to moisture, so the drying will be very important here. Now the recommended print settings. On the nozzle, 230 and 240 degrees Celsius, which is, let's say, typical for the TPU, but not so typical for the nylon, so I'm not sure what to expect here, what kind of layer adhesion. Bed temperature, 60 degrees Celsius, and the speed between 20 and 40 millimeters per second, which is quite low speed, but typical for the TPU, flexible TPU filaments, so I will try to follow these instructions, but maybe I will go a little bit higher with the speed. Let's see what's in the box. This is not vacuum packaging. Bag is not resealable. It's in a natural or transparent color. A little bit different recommended print temperature on the sticker, 235 plus minus 10 degrees Celsius. And also we have the date of the manufacturing. For the bending filament is flexible, but I cannot stretch it. But of course with 72D I don't even expect this. Now it goes to the filament dryer and then I will start the printing, but at this moment I'm not even sure what type of the testing should I do with this filament. My regular testing with the typical filaments, or I have a separate group of testing for the TPU type and flexible filaments, because this is something between. The filament is loaded and the only reason why I will print on X1 carbon is that it is prepared for the printing from the filament dryer. I will use the texture PI sheet without glue and the doors will be opened. The temperature tower will be from 250 down to 230 degrees Celsius. I'm starting from the generic TPU and then I'm modifying this, but don't take notes yet because these are not good settings you will see soon. And mostly probably because of this AUX fan, 70%. The start of the temperature tower is good. I hope that adhesion will not be too strong. This is the last element on 230 degrees Celsius, but it looks nice even on 250. Printing has finished two seconds ago. Better adhesion check. It's okay. It's removable. This don't have too much sense, but it looks the best on 250 degrees Celsius, which is above the recommended print temperature range. Hmm. Looks okay so far, but two more hours of printing, and uh, it's midnight here, so. It's a little bit risky, but it will be finished without my supervision. Mm, good morning. So much about spaghetti detection. Hmm. I have to check the time lapse. Looks like the problem was in the warping and then it lost the good contact with the bed. And also I noticed that it warps. So let's try new settings, but closer to the nylon, not to TPU. With new settings I am following the generic PA as a base, biggest difference is in the cooling, but also I am printing inside the enclosure and with different build plate. Switching to engineering plate with the glue on it, doors will be closed. Ok, don't like so low temperatures, I have to stop it. And now I know that this was a clog because of the heat creep. I cleaned the extruder and it is ready for printing again, but definitely I need settings somewhere between TPU and nylon. As you can see I'm printing on 240 degrees Celsius with the doors opened and the aux fan is off and it looks much healthier now. I also turned off the filament dryer just to prevent the repeating of this heat creep. And it's a clog again. And finally the settings which work for me. Generic TP is the base, of course I modified the temperature and the flow rate. Now the biggest difference will be in the part calling. The AUX fan will be completely disabled, but also I reduced the part cooling fan too, between 50 and 80%. Percent. 
I decided to print them in smaller groups. Later I will try different printer too. And also here I removed the top cover. Ok, looks like this method finally works. Not so easy for the printing. This object is for the wearing test, because TPU is the most wear resistant material, the nylon is the second best, so I'm curious what we will see here. For the rebound or elasticity testing. A <laughs> Prusa Mark IV. Slow printer, but still good for the TPU. There is no aux fan, no high speeds and similar. This is really long print on this slow printer, but it looks perfect. It will be finished in one minute. It's a handle for my daughter's bicycle. Maybe with the fuzzy skin it would be better, but smooth is nice too. Let's see will it fit. In design I left 0.2mm gap, but this is elastic so I can use some force. But I don't need to. Let's start with a layer adhesion with vertically printed test objects. For the reference I will include the data of TPU for AMS just for better comparison, which is also very hard material. And this is typical for these flexible filaments, uh, the brake load is between 20 and 30 kilograms. Tensile test with horizontally printed objects. This is camera 1 to see the brake load. And this is camera 2 to measure the prolongation. Which was approximately 200% in both cases. The tensile strength was very similar in both cases, but we can see much bigger flexibility with this TPU-72D. I'm not sure that it makes any sense measuring the toughness of the TPU-like filament, but let's do it. This slow motion footage I recorded later, but with exactly the same test object. With this testing machine I can measure even higher impacts, and I'm still using the same test object here. And still no break, it's just the form under the hammer. 3-point bending test is another experiment which don't make sense with these flexible type filaments. It deforms even under the spring of the dial indicator. This is a deformation under 1.25 kg, under 2.5 and under 5 it collapses. Definitely type of the stress which these filaments don't like. Creeping the deformation under constant load of 1.25 kg. Unlike with the previous two measurings, this is the part of my regular TPU tests. 74.51 Day 5, time for the last measuring. 78.30 It has quite a lot of permanent deformation, much more than regular TPU materials. TPU-72D had a smaller deformation compared to the TPU for AMS, but the creeping is the difference between two days, and only on a day one TPU for AMS had a bigger creeping, but later it stabilized and it was very minimal. Well, both TPU and nylons are very very resistant materials, but what will we get if we combine the two? It's a 3mm shaft, the load is 2.5 kg, and there will be 200 repeats. Well, this was definitely unexpected. The shaft penetrated even on the first movement and stuck inside. Not sure how to evaluate this. So let's try the other side, if I can mount this. This time much better, I will have 200 repeats. Wow, very minimal. I tried, but it's not even measurable, but even visually I cannot see any groove there. So I don't really understand what happened here, on the other side. This is the top layer. Usually I get something like this. This is PLA, PETG, different ABS materials. Static friction on the glass. These legs are CD printed, total load is 3.5 kilograms. And um, I'm doing this test with the TPU filaments, but soft TPU filaments are better for this. There I get this pulling load above 1 kilogram. Zero seventy, zero seventy, zero seventy. But if you need a bigger friction, then soft TPU is better. But still, this is uh, better compared to the PLA or PTG. There, this pulling load will be at approximately 0 0.3, 0 0.4 kilograms. And still, much bigger friction compared to the TPU for AMS. Ring compression test load 1.25 kg, 0.54 mm is the initial deformation. 
this is speed up part after one minute 0 0.84 and it still deforms after two minutes 0 0.92 millimeters and it still creeps which is typical for the nylon actually tpu 72 d more deformation but also additional deformation in that second minute compared to the tpu for ams ring pulling test initial 50.36 millimeters and after 2 minutes 50.42 millimeters and again bigger deformation and bigger flexibility of tpu 72 d rebound testing and i will repeat this three times actually i repeated this five times and i got exactly the same value but there is a small problem with this machine the dial jumps back a little bit here you can say freeze it and it jumps back a little bit Approximately 28% but I will check the footage and exactly from this reason because this dial jumps back a little bit I'm converting this to the digital and there will be a separate video about it. Temperature test in the oven. When I want to record the temperature of the first noticeable deformation TPU for the AMS started to deform at approximately 80 degrees Celsius but thanks to the nylon in this case it was higher temperature approximately 115 it was not so obvious but approximately here i noticed some deformation and i stopped the experiment on 164 degrees celsius and it was still not completely deformed and it can more or less hold its own shape of course it was soft and flexible but it holds its own shape washer test with m6 balls length is 15 millimeters and three rotations will be compression of uh, three millimeters the average tightening torque was uh, 4.7 newton meters. Untightening torque after one day 0.9, 1.2. Dimension after half hours 13.07, 13.00. These are the numbers, and same on the graphs. And we can see higher tightening and untightening torque when using TPU for the AMS. And also we can see less permanent deformation with the TPU for the AMS compared to the 72D. As a summary, our results one more time without any additional comments. And this one line will be added to the summary table for my pattern supporters. I have a separate uh, sheet for the TPU and flexible filaments. So for practical applications, use this filament where you need impact and very resistant material with some minimal flexibility. Well, actually printing with this filament is not so hard if you know the correct settings. First it confused me because I tried TPU settings which resulted too much particling and warping and then I go to the other end, nylon, which resulted in melting of the filament in the cold zone. And good settings are somewhere between. And I'm expecting similar problems because from the CC3D I bought the new filament which is a mix of the polycarbonate and PTG. Should I use the settings for the polycarbonate or for the PTG because there is some difference. And I hope you will follow me to that video too. Thanks for all my Patreon supporters because thanks to their donations I can buy these kind of filaments and do these testings. And of course together with the Polymaker sponsoring I have no limitations now. Thank you for watching this video and uh, happy printing.